Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today we got a couple of unboxings. We got two guitars, a couple of small things, as well as a sponsored unboxing, and we need to pick the winner of that Kima Fun wireless system that we did a couple of unboxings ago. And today's episode is actually sponsored by them again with a different product, which I think I might be able to use for the channel. Let's go ahead and start with a brand new guitar. Um, okay, it's something from Epiphone. Because Epiphones usually get these boxes like this. Oh my goodness. I know this is going to make at least one person on the internet very happy. <laughs> this is in reference to that guy who is just making a ton of comments all over YouTube waiting for somebody to review this model. Now watch, it's not actually that one. The ultimate tease for this poor guy. Now for those of you wondering what happened to the uh, the Tony Iommi Monkey SG video, I'm working on it. It's just, you know, life got in the way. I can never get these videos out when I want to get them out. But I think that'll be one of the next ones that I do. But this guy right here. Oh, dang. I feel bad for that guy. I teased him again. No, this appears to be the uh, Flying V. So this is like a super fancy Epiphone model. Look at that, it's got the raised Epiphone logo. They're playing off the ones that the Gibson had. I'm surprised that they went with silver. I think the gold goes better with this, doesn't it? But the big reveal here, that's pretty nice. I guess they went with silver because the rest of it is the chrome hardware. This is a fancy, you know, 59 style Flying V, the original Flying V. These things are a lot different from the 67 style because they got like the big shoulders here. I know they have like the Amos style one. That's a Joe Bonamassa signature. This is just kind of a, a really fancy looking guitar here. It's always hard to fit the Flying Vs in the shots because they have that big spread down there. But I think this is actually one of the more higher end Epiphones. It's a nice rounded neck, but very slim in feel. And it's kind of got a really big clunky heel. Oh man, I love this feature on the uh, the 50 style flying Vs. It's there to help it so it doesn't, you know, come off your leg as much. It'll kind of rest against there. I just like these guys because they're a string through design. That looks really, really strange though. I guess maybe I've just never paid that much attention. Or is the Gibson one farther back? I think what I'll do with this one is I'm just gonna list it right away. If it sells before I can get to the review, it's kind of like that last one I did. I'll just buy another one when I get the chance. So. But I'm just so backed up on reviews, I would hate to, you know, hold on for these for too long, but, you know, deny somebody else that actually wanted one of these. Don't worry, guy that wants the Firebird. I think, I truly do believe, one of these three boxes has that Firebird, but those will be the next unboxing episode. Because the Explorer's still sitting out there in the other room, and I think that's the only one that has a big one like this. But as is usual, the second unboxing here is our sponsored one by Kima Fun. Last time, if you remember correctly, we looked at their wireless unit that actually works really well. And we need to pick a winner for not this exact unit. They're gonna send you a different one because I get to keep this. But here is our winner. Congratulations. The giveaway rules will be the same on this one. You just have to visit their Amazon link. Comment your favorite feature about this new item. And like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. But this time we are going to take a look at this. Now when they asked me to uh, do another sponsored unboxing, I thought I would try this out because it's interesting. This is like a, a lav mic, like kind of a headset. So what I'm thinking is if the quality of this is actually pretty good, I might just start using it. You know, for the unboxing series, I can look like some sort of super cyborg. <laughs> So it looks like we get the headset. You also get the adapter if you need to plug it like directly into something that uses the quarter inch jack. Looks like some sort of other thing. And they also have like a clip on version that you can use if you don't want to wear the Britney Spears style mic that I just demoed. And this looks to be the actual unit itself. So what I'm thinking I can do 
is over here on my uh, camera, I normally have this. But on my unboxing series, I actually use the GoPro audio, which is not very good. So I think I'll just be able to plug this in directly into there, but that'll just plug in right there. And then these are rechargeable, just like that last one. You just gotta turn them on and then that'll wirelessly communicate directly into my camera. So let's go ahead and grab a brief sample of that. All right, so we'll go ahead and give this just a little bit of a test. As you can see, I'm moving the camera all the way up here, but my voice is now staying the same. As you can hear, there's a little bit of a background noise. I'm not sure if that just has to do with how I have it plugged directly into my camera, but once you have it plugged directly into an audio interface using that quarter inch jack conversion, it definitely cleans up the audio a lot better than if it's plugged directly into the camera. So it's definitely a nice usable product. Very cool. Thank you, Kima Fun, for sponsoring that episode. Now let's uh, go with these two things. This first one is just gonna be a quick thing. It's a little envelope. I got a cease and desist letter from Gibson. <laughs> no, just kidding. I do want to sell guitar posters though. So I don't know if anybody's in the legal team. Can I actually sell photos of Les Pauls if Gibson's name is not in it? Because I've been thinking about selling posters of the guitars I review or maybe even little stickers or canvas prints. I think that'd be an awesome product because not everybody can afford the guitar, but they can afford 20 bucks to uh, get it. So this is a replacement ring, but unfortunately they sent me the wrong thing, I think. Pickup ring neck cream. Yeah, this looks like a Gibson USA part. Because if you're wondering why the uh, 60th anniversary RO review video hasn't came out yet, I had noticed that the neck pickup ring actually had a very small crack in it. It just looked like a piece of hair, but it's not. Yeah, what they've sent me is a Gibson USA ring. That's gonna be different from the historic spec version because historic rings are a lot taller and they're a lot more expensive. But honestly, if I didn't know Les Paul's in and out, I wouldn't have known the difference either. I don't blame them, no problems. But the other thing I purchased here, um, I got it off of Amazon based on somebody's kind of like a, a brief little message here that they said I should start trying to document the neck profile in a different way. And I had actually tried to do this before, but their message kind of helped me think about it and try one more time. So there is a really cool way to measure Say I wanted to install something directly around here to fit on top of that. You can use something like this, that's a contour gauge. And essentially what you do is something like this in order to measure that and then you kind of do that. Obviously that's not so good. But what I liked about this is that it would lock into place. But what I'm noticing is this is definitely not going to work because it's way too stiff. Because in theory, what you're supposed to be able to do is find one that's really loose fitting. And then you can do this, and then I can show you guys the neck profile. So in this case, this is what the neck would feel like to you guys at the first fret. And then all the way up at the 12th fret here, you can see it gets a little bit bigger right there. So I, I don't know, maybe this one will work, maybe it won't. It, it just feels a little bit stiff, like it'll actually hurt the guitar. But as long as I use this little cloth, I think the guitars won't get hurt. And it'll give you a general idea of what to expect. I mean, this will be great for like the really flat shaped necks, but you can see this is definitely very rounded. So let me know your guys' thoughts on this. I know I've, I've tried it before, but I had like a metal one and it's like damaging the guitar. So it's like, no, I don't wanna do that. I actually tried getting a little kid's toy, you know, the ones that you put your hands underneath it, but that one just didn't have enough pegs for it to actually capture that. So we'll see how this one goes. Then our last one to unbox here. This box looks rather beat up. It got torn up here, the flaps coming untaped. Hopefully it's okay and it's not too bad. Usually if the box looks bad, it's because it's done its job. Well, luckily it's double box, so I think we'll be A-OK -okay here. And it looks like we got another Epiphone in here. All right, so which one is this? I think we're finally coming to an end of all those new guitars I bought. I went crazy. You know, the NAMM show hype, it gets me every year now that I'm paying attention to new guitars. And I'm actually at the point where, you know, it makes sense for me to buy them all to review, but I got vastly overwhelmed. What is this? Is this deja vu? <laughs> so 
Yeah, I bought another Les Paul Modern because I had instant regret when I sold that last one without getting the review done. And the other colors seem to be, you know, on a super delay, but Musician's Friends still had one of these and all the other dealers were sold out. So I figured, hey, I can get this one. <laughs> I'll probably end up doing the exact same thing, listing it and being, oh, darn, why didn't I sell it? But I'm just in love with these Les Paul Moderns and people are buying these things. I think Agufish just did a full review and demo on his. So if you're more interested in like a metal and progressive style, you can check out his review and demo on it. Once again, you have a beautiful ebony board on it with just a little bit of streakiness to it, but it's the color. The color on the faded Pelham blues for Epiphone, it's just better. It truly is better than the Gibson iteration because it just looks a little bit darker in person. But this one, um, is that a two piece? No, it's, it's a three piece body, it, but it has seam lines in a different location. That last one, it looked a little bit weird right there. This one's a little bit more uniformed, but you can see that join line right there. So that's just gonna vary. I love taking a look at different examples of each. A lot of people were saying in that last episode that they appreciate that they can see the seam lines instead of seeing them put like a fancy veneer on here. This is a really cool guitar and it is available. I figured since all the other shops are out of stock, I might as well liberate one of these for you guys to pick up at a nice little price. How was our frets on this one? I guess I forgot to check that uh, Flying V. It felt good. Honestly, this one plays really great out of the box. I'm just noticing some sort of a, a phantom buzz somewhere. Sometimes that's just the, the plastic coating that's over the pickup. Sometimes you just gotta knock the saddle in, but this is actually a really nice example. But now it's time to move on to some boxings. Even our packing has a theme today. I love baritone guitars and sadly, all three of my baritone guitars sold on the same day. That's just kind of how it goes for me. So what is our first one? I have to say goodbye to my favorite modern era Les Paul. I think we all know the story of the Buckethead Les Pauls by now. I said I was gonna re-review the next one I got, but this was actually an old one that I had ended up purchasing back because he had sold that whole Buckethead collection. But what's kind of interesting about this one is I'm trading it. It's not a complete trade. It was mainly cash, but he threw on another guitar just to kind of sweeten the deal to make it worth my while to get it up to the price that I was wanting for this thing. So we're going to be reviewing kind of an interesting guitar that I would have never had bought had it not came this way. It's a pretty high end kind of super strat like thing. So if you need to learn more about the Buckethead Les Paul, you can check out these videos, but let's go ahead and get it packed up. And the next two baritones to go out are those Jazz Masters. We'll go ahead and pack the more difficult up one first. The, uh, the black one is inside the gig bag. So as I was publishing the video after I said I found spec sheets that say they were both basswood, I finally found one that said Alder. But that was not from the Fender's official website and it was from overseas and the brand new price was like 650. So maybe there's a run that I missed about these guys. I'm not sure. But I had a lot of fun with these Squire Jazz Masters because it just seems I'm attracted to the Jazz Masters that aren't Jazz Masters because there's so much strange stuff going on with these things. But I had a great time with this one. Uh, it sold, I think, within like an hour of it being posted on Reverb, and that was at 500 bucks. And the last one for this episode, the Antigua Baritone. This is the one I'm gonna miss more. And that's mainly just because these are so hard to find. The only other one at the time of recording this that's actually for sale, the guy wants almost a thousand bucks and it's not as clean as this one. The whole color of it, the whole baritone scale length, I'm not sure why the metal community kind of gravitates towards this one because the color looks so strange to be playing gent on but I, I guess people like it. This one makes me think more you know, like the spaghetti western stuff so I think a baritone version of this it's mainly for things like that and ambient music but 
If you learn nothing else from this unboxing episode, try a baritone out one day. They are a lot of fun, especially if you're kind of stuck in a rut. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this boxing unboxing session. Don't forget to visit our sponsor. All the links are in the description for the giveaway rules and details. And we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.